And all the tangerines, they taste like jelly beans. This must be boring by now. Grab a scale and guess the weight of all the pain I've given with my name. I'm a selfish piece of shit. Chris Cornell, overreaction? Let us pray. Dear Lord, it becomes clearer and clearer over time, and we thank you for that. Forgive us our sins. We acknowledge your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, the other day, actually before Thanksgiving even, someone left a comment on my channel, which I thought was very interesting. And I had had the same thought many times during this case, during taking a look at this case, but I could never put it into words so elegantly, so succinctly. So let's take a look. No, I'm not going to say the name. <sighs> you know what bothers me? First of all, what VK says about talking to him and him slurring his words. I don't think two pills makes one slur, especially when you take them regularly and without alcohol. The other thing is, unless the person is someone that you know is at risk of doing something stupid because he's regularly depressed or because he's done so in the past, you don't just ask people to go knock doors down if someone is a bit slurry. That's not your first thought. And according to VK, he was a happy family man, so there was no indication of risk of doing something stupid, according to her. So why this reaction from her? Almost like she knew she did, in parentheses. But what I mean is, if I call a friend and they're slurring, I may be worried. But I put it down to, oh, they need to sleep and they'll be okay in the morning. I don't just go there and knock their door down thinking suicide, unless I knew the person was prone to that, or overdose. But the security guy had the pills, so she should have known it wasn't overdose. That is a brilliant comment, and I thank the person that left it. Again, I've had this thought many times, and I've put it into words in a different way by talking about how they knew Chris was dead in that room already, both of them, VK and uh, MK. Allegedly, of course. That's why the whole act about calling security and the fake phone calls that took place. Allegedly, of course. But ask yourself, Chris Cornell there's not one documented event of the cops being called in Chris's history because he was about to off himself or something. We get a lot of testimony from people like Morello about cryptic comments and shit like that. But that's all we get. So ask yourself, is this an overreaction? by VK here in this situation. There is no documented evidence ever of Chris attempting suicide. So just because he sounds a little slurry on the phone, you're gonna go have the security guy kick down the door? No, that's an overreaction. That reaction isn't warranted by what was going on with Chris. And then we saw the toxicology. Was he all loaded up with drugs? Fuck no. 
So there goes the, he was out of his mind on drugs theory. Oh, that's right. Then they changed it to a cumulative effect. Remember that about a year later, months and months later, all of a sudden it was the cumulative effect of taking Ativan long-term. They had to change it to that because the tox made them look like bloody liars. In my opinion, and I've thought this for a long time, they both already knew he was dead. That's why the whole charade about calling security, I don't really want to kick down the doors. I don't want to be the one to find the body. It totally reminds me of the Courtney Love Cobain thing. She did not want to be the one to find that body. She wanted the private investigator and one of Chris's, or excuse me, Kurt's friends to find that body. But that didn't happen, so then she had to call had to call a bunch of workmen and have them roam the property. Oh yeah, and make sure you go above that garage and check that out. I want a camera there. Now that's just conjecture by me, but we all know how it went down, don't we? So as far as Courtney and Kurt, the overreaction. According to Kurt's friends at the time, he wasn't suicidal at all. And I use the term friends loosely, but they did contradict what Courtney Love was saying at the time when she called the private investigator. It's in a big panic. Just because Kurt wasn't talking to her, that means you call a PI to track him down? Just because him and his friend bought a shotgun? I have a theory, he probably brought the shotgun because Courtney Price said on the phone, I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker, if you leave me. You ain't leaving nobody. He wouldn't talk to her. Kurt Cobain would not talk to Courtney Love. That was infuriating her. Why? Because he had been talking divorce. In other words, the PI wasn't hired because Courtney was afraid Kurt was gonna off himself. He was hired to cut Kurt off at the pass because Kurt wasn't communicating with her and their last conversation was some type of fight. And he said, I'm gonna divorce your ass. I'm leaving you. So what Courtney was trying to do was cut Kurt off at the pass. She canceled his credit card, trying to cut him off financially so she could get to him. So she could dig her claws back in and either finish him or talk him out of that divorce. My point is, Kurt was a grown man, and according to other people in his life, he was not suicidal at the time of his death. There are several interviews he did that he talked about how happy he was, how his stomach problems were cleared up. In other words, the hiring of a PI was an overreaction for a different reason other than stated to the PI, and the PI knew that. He could tell from second one, something wasn't right here. That's why he documented everything. Same thing in the Vicky Chris situation. Just because your man slurring his words a little bit, you're gonna call the bodyguard, go kick down the doors, I'm worried. No. Same situation in both cases, in my opinion. Relationship on the rocks. Divorce, probably a prenuptial agreement, meaning the wife ain't getting much. And then if the kids are taken away, wife ain't getting shit. No grand conspiracies other than two greedy ass gold digging wives that want to live a certain kind of lifestyle. And those two men were their access to that lifestyle. When those two men tried to leave, 
they ended up dead. Allegedly, of course. I remember everything I said. Theory. Allegations. Not court decided fact. Tinfoil hat shit. Conjecture. But all the grand conspiracies do amuse me. Now there is a, you know, lesser conspiracy. The typical gold digger and cash cow wanting to leave. I said this a long time ago. You don't kill your cash cow unless he's trying to leave. So I thank that commenter that left that comment. I kind of said the same thing, but in a different way, but I really love the way they put it. So thank you for leaving that comment and putting it that way. Well done. I've been thinking about that comment since before Thanksgiving. Every day I'm like, I'm going to do a video about this. So thank you so much for saying it. That's one of the great things about, I guess you could call it audience participation. This isn't just a YouTube channel where people watch. People actually contribute to the information, to the theories. It's amazing. And I thank so many of you that have done that and taken it so seriously. And in one of the next few videos, if not the next video, I'm going to talk about that documentary Soaked in Bleach about Kurt Cobain because I think it's the best one that was ever done. It doesn't show any of the shitty leads that Tom followed. And I don't blame Tom for that, by the way. There's been shitty leads that I've followed. You have to. Um... It's very to the point and it really shows what went down and it made me very sad to watch it. And I'm going to watch it again because there's a lot of things I noticed in that documentary that I'd like to talk about and I want to take notes on it and it's just a brilliant piece of work and it fascinated me how Grant said in the video, you know, I've been thinking about this every day for 20 years. Never stop thinking about it. That's fascinating to me because I think about this endeavor. I've asked myself many times, you know, it's a year later, Nick. How long should I continue this? Now it's a year and a half later. How long should I continue this? Will people still care? Well, Tom Grant's been continuing for 20, over 20 years. That documentary came out in 2016. And I've watched pretty much every documentary that's been done on that situation, the relationship with Kurt and Courtney, even the one her daughter put out. But this one I feel is the best. And there's things I've been saying in this past six months about Kurt, Kurt and Courtney. And I hadn't even watched the documentary yet. And the documentary basically just literally proved what I thought. And people kept telling me to watch it. Just like they told me to watch certain videos involving Chris and stuff like that. Music videos, etc. That I kind of said, you know, just I've seen them. I've seen them all, you know. But again, I was wrong in this case. I should have watched this a while ago, but I'm glad I had a chance to put my theories out before I watched it. Because then when I watched it, I was like, well, wow, this is basically what I've been saying. Divorce, prenup, Kurt on the run from Courtney. That's basically what was going on. Then he ends up dead. Now, let me ask you this question, and I won't go any, into any more on this because I want to do it in another video. Like I said, if Kurt Cobain and his lawyers were smart enough to get a prenup when he married Courtney Love, all those years ago when he was so very young, don't you think Chris Cornell and his lawyers were smart enough to get a prenup when he married into the K family? I do. 
Shit like that makes it all make sense when you think about why VK was pushing so hard for that medical examiner in Detroit to change his ruling so she could get insurance. It makes sense of the fact that VK is now suing the doctor. She did not get the money she wanted out of this. Out of the will, out of his death in general through insurance, whatever. If she did, she wouldn't have been on a flight to Detroit with her weasel lawyer. And she wouldn't be suing the doctor right now. It's that simple. But these two cases are the exact same thing, in my opinion. Heading these, off, heading these men off at the pass before they can get into court and get a divorce going. That's simple. Nothing bigger than that. But I know. Chris and Chester had this documentary coming out. Pizzagate, Pedogate, Hillary Clinton. I know, I know. No. Nah, just a couple greedy bitches. That's all. Anyway. Please, folks, don't neglect the PayPal. So we can continue. Please don't neglect it. Don't treat it like a stepchild. And I thank so many of you that have given over this past month. Thank you so much. And if you like the video, hit the like button. And if you like the content, if you like what we're doing here, subscribe and hit the little bell. And make sure once you hit the little bell, you pick the part where it says, notify me of every video. That way you don't miss a thing. You don't miss one second of the shit show. The K family shit show. The C love or C hate shit show. The Bourdain shit show. Another guy who was with a witch, relationship on the rocks, and then it comes out she slept with a 17 year old after the man dies. And he's the one that was paying the bill to the 17 year old. That's fascinating, isn't it? It's, it's just all coincidence, right? And they all die the same way except for Cobain with something around their neck. All basically sober. Not, you know, not with tied up hands or feet where they couldn't save their own lives. They just sat there and let themselves choke to death and fought that instinctive urge to live. Hmm. Fascinating. Fascinating. Anyway, peace be ever with you.